Okay, run and get your blanket and come and sit with honey and I'll read you a book. This one is called The Important Thing About Margaret Wise Brown. She said, it did not seem important that anyone wrote these stories. They were true and it still doesn't seem important. All this emphasis today on who writes what seems silly to me as far as children are concerned. Margaret Wise Brown. Margaret Wise Brown lived for 42 years. This book is 42 pages long. You can't fit somebody's life into 42 pages. So I'm just going to tell you some important things. The important thing about Margaret Wise Brown is that she wrote books. Every book was written by somebody. Some books were written by Ruth Krauss. Some books were written by John Siska or Do the Force. The book you are reading now is written by Mac Barnett. Over 100 books were written by Margaret Wise Brown. It can be odd to imagine the lives of the people who write the books you read, like running into your teacher at the supermarket, but authors are people too. They are born and they die. They make jokes and mistakes. They fall in love and they fall in love again. They go to the supermarket to buy tomatoes, which they keep in the bottom drawers of their refrigerators, even though tomatoes should stay out on the counter. But which of these things is important and to whom? What is important about Margaret Wise Brown? Well, what do you want to know? When is her birthday? May 23rd, 1910. What color was her hair? Golden, the color of Timothy Hay. Did she ever fall in love? Yes. Did she have a dog? She had lots of dogs. What was her favorite dog's name? His name was Crispin's Crispian. Was he a good boy? She thought so, but he bit a lot of people. Is any of this important? Why do you ask? What is important about Margaret Wise Brown? When Margaret Wise Brown was six or seven, she lived in a house next to the woods. She kept many pets, a dog and two squirrels, seven fish, a pair of guinea pigs, a wild robin, and 36 rabbits. This is a story about a rabbit. Margaret's rabbits lived in a great big hutch. At first there were a few, and then there were many. That's how it is with rabbits. They are born and they die. And when one of Margaret's rabbits died, she skinned that rabbit and wore its pelt. Margaret wrapped herself in that rabbit's fur and paraded before her brother and sisters and the other rabbits as well. There are people who will say a story like this doesn't belong in a children's book, but it happened. Margaret Wise Brown took up a rabbit and took off its pelt and she did it when she was a child. And isn't it important that children's books contain the things children think of and the things children do, even if those things seem strange? This is a story about a rabbit. The rabbit must go to bed and he takes a very long time saying goodnight to everything. Nobody knows why he says goodnight to all this stuff his socks and some mush and even the air, but I have an idea. I think it is because he is afraid to go to sleep. Have you read this book? Do you know what I mean? This is a story about a rabbit. He's trying to escape from his mother, but his mother just won't let him get away. Maybe that is why he is trying to escape from her. This is not a story about a rabbit, but when this book was first published, do you know what its cover was made of? The cover of this book was made of the fur of a rabbit. Every copy was wrapped up in real, real, real rabbit's fur. What do you think about that? People thought Margaret Wise Brown was strange and they thought her books were strange too. Now it's true that Margaret Wise Brown did strange things. She swam naked in cold water. She put a door in her house that led out to a cliff that plunged into the sea. And when Margaret Wise Brown first got paid to write a book, do you know what she did with the money? Margaret Wise Brown found a flower cart on a street in the city and she bought the whole thing, not the cart, not the horse, but every last flower. Margaret Wise Brown filled her little home with flowers and she threw a party and invited all her friends. After a few hours, her friends left and after a few days, the flowers died. But some people might think it's silly or sad to spend so much money on something that is over so soon, but I think it's beautiful. How about you? Now it's true that Margaret Wise Brown wrote strange books. In her books, you would turn the page and the story would suddenly change. Sometimes a duck would appear for no reason and the narrator would often stop telling the story and ask the reader a question. Now, isn't that a strange thing to do? 
Some people, when they see something strange, they become bothered. These people build worlds that make perfect sense, even if that means ignoring many strange things around them. Now, here is something I believe. I know there are only 23 pages left in this book, but it's important. No good book is loved by everyone, and any good book is bound to bother somebody. Because every good book is at least a little bit strange, and there are some people who do not like strange things in their worlds. Anne Carol Moore was a librarian, and she, and her world was a room in the New York Public Library. It was a world she built with plants and candles and small tables and chairs and shelves full of books for children. The New York Public Library is guarded by two stone lions on the steps out front, and the children's room was guarded by Anne Carol Moore. Anne Carol Moore was a conservative. She liked books that were darling and innocent like she thought children should be. When Anne Carol Moore read the right kind of book, it got its own place on the little shelf in the library. And when Anne Carol Moore read the wrong kind of book, she picked up a big rubber stamp, which she slammed down, bam, and which said, not recommended for purchase by expert. And the book did not get a place on a shelf in that library, nor in many other libraries besides, because lots of librarians listened to Anne Carol Moore. She was important. So Anne Carol Moore would sit at her desk with a stack of books and a rubber stamp and a wooden doll named Nicholas Knickerbocker. Nicholas Knickerbocker went everywhere with Miss Moore. He had his own luggage and he had his own bed. And if you ever had dinner at Anne Carol Moore's house, you might find yourself sitting next to Nicholas Knickerbocker who had his own plate and a fork and a knife. And you'd have to ask, how do you do? When Margaret Wise Brown was 27, this is the 27th page of this book, she brought two of her books to Anne Carol Moore, who read them and frowned and said, these are truck, which means I don't like them. Truck is not good. Truck means worthless. It means garbage. Anne Carol Moore thought those were the wrong kind of books. But do you know what Nicholas Knickerbocker thought? Nothing. Nicholas Knickerbocker was made of wood. He didn't have a brain. Margaret Wise Brown's books were not recommended for purchase by expert, and so this book did not get into the library. And this book did not get into the library. And even this book, which you've probably read, and if you haven't, you should, it did not come into the library. By the time Goodnight Moon was written, Anne Carol Moore had retired, but she'd still go to her old desk, which was now someone else's, someone named Frances, and she'd tear up the list of books Frances liked and put down a list of her own. Though, to be fair, I don't think Frances liked Goodnight Moon either. In fact, there was a time when even Margaret Wise Brown did not get to come into the library. I know we are nearing the end of this book, which is only 42 pages, but this is important. There was once a tea party at the New York Public Library. Authors were there and illustrators were there, and Anne Carol Moore was there, and so was Frances. But when Margaret Wise Brown walked up the steps to the front door, she wasn't allowed inside. She didn't have an invitation. So when people with invitations walked up to the library, do you know what they found right in the middle of the stairs? They found two women, Margaret Wise Brown and her editor, whose name was Ursula Nordstrom, sitting there right in the middle of the stairs between the two lions, whose names were Patience and Fortitude, having a tea party of their own. Margaret Wise Brown sat there drinking her tea. I don't know for sure Margaret Wise Brown was a rab wore a rabbit fur coat that day, but we had to put her in something. And if you wanted to get into the library, you had to go around her. We we're getting close to page 42, which is the last page of this book. When Margaret Wise Brown turns 42, she will take up her furs and her dog, Crispin's Crispian, who bites, and take off on a ship across the ocean. This was her plan, to get married to somebody she loved very much and to sail around the world. But when Margaret Wise Brown is 42, she will die in a hospital in France. Lives don't work out the way books do. They can end suddenly, as fast as you kick your leg in the air. Lives are funny and sad, scary and comforting, beautiful and ugly, but not when they're supposed to be, and sometimes all at the same time. There are patterns in a life and patterns in a story, but in real lives and good stories, the patterns are hard to see because the truth is never made of straight lines. Lives are strange, and there are people who do not like strange stories, especially in books for children. But sometimes you find a book that feels as strange as life does, 
These books feel true. These books are important. Margaret Wise Brown wrote books like this, and she wrote them for children because she believed children deserve important books. The important thing about Margaret Wise Brown is that she wrote books. The end. <laughs>